Hello, hi, hi! Welcome back to another fun episode of All About Yana. Today's episode is going to be a boss up video, a long awaited boss up video. <laughs> so grab you some tea, get you a little snacky snack, and come on back. requests on a video about vehicle financing so I'm gonna go ahead and do that video for you guys today today is the day <laughs> um, so let's do a little disclaimer and say this video is for of course people who are maybe just starting to work or maybe you are a student and you're looking to you know broaden your spectrum a little bit about certain things um, I'm gonna say the most like entry level things, basic, basic, basic chats for a regular schmegular girl or guy if I have any male uh, males watching. Um, it's gonna be just very, very basic. So if you're looking for something a little more advanced, this is definitely not the video for you. It's more, let's call it beginner friendly, right? So someone who just started working and that trying to buy a car, they don't know what to do. This video is definitely for you, right? Alrighty, let's get right to it. Alrighty, so I'm gonna be basing this video, of course, as usual, on my own personal experiences. I am going to be looking down a lot. I have my phone with me today. I know usually I have a notebook, but <laughs> I wrote my notes in my phone because I've been kind of planning this for a while, so I'd write like little, you know, little trinkets and stuff in, in my phone. So I'm gonna use my notes here today. Um, Alright, so you want to buy a car. Congratulations, first of all, uh, for making this step. Oh my gosh, guys, sorry for the background noise. If you can hear anything, I'm really sorry about that. So I, I was saying, you want to buy a car. So you have three options. You could either get a brand new car, you could get a secondhand car, or you could get a great import. I've had an experience with all three so I'm gonna be sharing my experience with you today and what you can do to finance these three options okay so we're gonna start with a brand new car so this means you're in a position where you can afford to buy a brand spanking new car so you want to buy a brand new VW let's say using myself as an example right so you have a couple of options you can buy it cash if you got the chunkuras you can go ahead and just swipe and buy that car cash Personally, I do not ever encourage people to buy vehicles cash. That is something that I will never do, no matter how rich I get. I will never, <laughs> never, and I'll explain as this video goes on. Um, basically, the main reason is um, opportunity cost of investments. Right now, at this point in my life, I'm still young. There's absolutely no need for me to take. Let's say, for example, my car was... Uh, to 205 so 205,000 kula why would I have that cash and then blow it on a car that doesn't make any sense I would definitely would rather use that money to invest so within the first year of buying your car that's when you're gonna lose the most value of the car you're gonna lose it within the first year and if you buy that car cash basically you're losing that money in cash why would you want to lose let's say 50,000 cash like that oof no 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 don't buy cars cash Okay, don't do that. So that's the first option, which I definitely do not encourage, right? The second option would be vehicle financing. So I've had an experience with both West Bank and Stambik, so I'll reference those two a lot. Of course, you can use whatever bank works for you, but those are the two banks that I've used, so I'll be referencing them a lot. So you have an option of just going to the bank, and you can just basically just call them and tell them, you know, I get paid this much, um, how much do I qualify for, and they will tell you. I remember about three or four years ago, I was told that I qualify for a car that is worth, I think they said 350,000. <laughs> and I looked at my salary and I said to myself, there is absolutely no way. I think with 350, 300,000, somewhere there, you're probably paying my 5.5, somewhere there. Um, it's the meeting, right? And I remember going, my salary at the time, minus 5.5, and I'm like, what am I going to pay rent with? What am I going to eat? 
I want to go out with my friends, I want to save to travel, I need savings for certain things. So whatever they tell you, you need to make sure that you go way below. Don't listen to the bank. You are that customer. They need you to stay trapped in your loan. The more you pay, the more they gain. Do not listen to the bank, okay? So if they tell you you qualify for 250,000, look for a car within the hundreds, 100 and something, 100, just somewhere there. Make sure you always go way, way below what they advise you to get, right? Lewena, make sure you wait the bella and then you check your own affordability. Majority of the time, it differs from perfect, from person to person. For example, single girl, no kids, no responsibility. Obviously, you can, you know, maybe you risk a little bit, but if you do have a baby to take care of, you have some responsibilities going to be, you're taking care of your parents, you're taking care of a cousin, a friend, whatever the case is, you want to make sure that you aren't spending so much of your salary on your car. Whatever you think you can afford, always go lower. Okay? Girl code. <laughs> Um, so now you know your affordability, right? You can go straight to the dealership, pick a car, <laughs> go to the bank, give them your documents, they approve everything, boom, within three days you can have a brand new car. It's really, really, really simple, right? Or you can pay a deposit and then they'll let you know how much your monthly installments will be and then you'll pay that. Or you can actually defer your deposit. So this is the this is the tricky one that gets a lot of people in trouble, right? So you can either instead of paying your deposit now, you can pay it at the end of your loan. Let's say five years. I'd recommend stick to five years. These days it can go up to seven years, but I recommend you just stick to five years. So what happens is you don't have money for deposit right now, but you want the car. So you can defer that to the end of the loan. So after five years, that's when you can then pay your deposit. So usually it's around 30%. You will hear people refer to this kind of um, financial payment plan as um, a balloon payment or sometimes they'll say residual value. This one is very, 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 very risky because you are basically assuming that in five years you will have 30 percent of the value of your car to then give the bank so what happens is like i was saying they want to keep you trapped right so at the end of at the end of five years you don't have that money what they do is they can then allow you to refinance um that deposit that you were supposed to pay in the beginning i guess and then i think they'll let you refinance it i think it's for another year or two then you'll be paying for that car for seven Yes, so that's what I'm saying. This one is a little tricky. I recommend this one for people who do not intend on keeping that car. If you do not intend on keeping your car for like forever and ever and ever, amen, then I'd say you can do this method, but please be very careful because you are basically telling the bank that you know for a fact that you will have, let's say, 60,000 chilling in cash in five years. It's a little tricky right so be careful with this one and then another way if you want to do this balloon payment one another way you can manage it is you can take out some deposit in the beginning then you defer a certain percentage of it to the end of your your loan again i really always <laughs> i want to say be very very careful with this because it gets a lot of people in trouble i don't know if any of you guys have ever been to the west bank um warehouse <laughs> okay killer cars lined up like this a brand new car samagawu lemakarebe taken from them why because they're defaulting on their payments like okay. so you guys need to make sure you are very very careful and again please live your life below your means like if you can afford here live here just to make sure you don't get yourself in any kind of trouble um, and then the third option obviously would be a personal loan, which I definitely do not recommend as I've spoken about it in previous videos. Do not ever, ever, ever get a personal loan to finance a car. I am completely against it. Um, reason being a personal loan. Eh? If you get a personal loan of let's say 30,000 and at the, you get it for let's say five years, right? So at the end of five years, you're supposed to pay back in total, you're gonna pay back, let's say 50,000. I'm just guessing amounts, right? You're gonna pay back 50,000. 
with a personal loan regardless of whether you clear that loan in a year two years three years or maybe at the end of five years you will pay back that fifty thousand you took thirty but you will pay back fifty thousand in total regardless of when you decide to clear this loan that was my experience with a personal loan horrible however if you opt for a vehicle loan so if you opt for like a west bank like a stand big vehicle loan what happens is if after two years you no longer want the car or if after three years however long you no longer want the car you can sell it they don't charge you interest there those other years that you have not reached so does that make sense if after three years you want to say you want to sell your car you will only be charged for interest there three years am i making sense whereas with a personal loan you will pay interest there five years do you get it do not <laughs> do not do it it's not worth it don't do it but yeah so that's that's for a brand new car right and the second option is um a second hand car so if you want a second hand car i think my first vw my first vw was second hand yeah um i bought it for i'm gonna give you figures so you understand better i bought it for eighty thousand and with second hand cards if you want to finance them through the bank it's an absolute must that you pay deposit there's no second hand card that you can get without a deposit so you need i think at the time they charged me 10 percent, so i paid 8,000 cash so then my loan was only 72,000. so i only owed the bank 72,000, right then what i did was the amount that i paid was a discount that i negotiated with the person i was buying from but that was not the true value of the car i went and valued the car the car's value was ninety thousand, i believe and then i insured the car for the correct value not what i paid for it i hope my insurer is not watching i went and valued the car and then i insured it for the correct value of the car then what happened is after i think about two years of having the car got in a terrible 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 accident and the vehicle was written off so when that vehicle is written off obviously i had financed it through west bank what happens is because west bank and i own the car right it's not my car loan if you finance it through the bank both of you guys own it but the bank has more rights to the car than you do okay you only own the car after paying it off so after your five years you pay everything then it's yours if you haven't paid the full term of the loan it belongs to you and the bank but the bank has more rights to the car than you so when they're paying my claim they don't pay me they pay the bank and at the time um so my loan was say said my loan was only 72,000. it had only been two years they don't charge me for interest the echo bill so they take only what's theirs and then they give you back your change if you have any so because i had paid that deposit i was able to then have some change right so that's one way to finance it then another way obviously is cash which i don't recommend but funny enough with a second hand car you could possibly get it cash and it won't be so offensive because you lose the most value within the first year so after a few years it depreciates a little bit slower than when it's brand spanking you so you could kind of yeah but i still don't recommend cash because like i'm saying if you have a a huge lump sum of money you are better off investing it so the main issue with buying cash is just the opportunity cost which is investment invest that money make it grow why would you spend it on a liability do you know what i mean um and then again you could use a personal loan which again i absolutely do not recommend for the reasons stated in the explanation for our brand new car right cool and then the third option is a great import i've had two great imports <laughs> um the first one was purchased cash um i think i bought it for fifty five thousand, sold it for 30 something i believe and yeah you see how much you lose between 55 and 35 but again i we got like we got a good use out of the car so it's not so bad um then the second way my second great import i financed it through a personal loan that's why i had a terrible terrible experience and i will forever be the advocate of do not buy cars with personal loans don't do it it's not worth it so yeah those are your three options i think for great imports i would encourage people to just save um Entry level cars, usually Bomasta, Demio, Boranex, they, they go from a 30 something. I recommend you just put some money away for about a year or two and then buy your car. 
I just really would not recommend that you finance it through a bank. And I know for the higher value vehicles, I think West Bank does finance Kobe Trading. I don't know if there's any other dealer that West Bank finances, but that one is a little, it's a little tricky because chances are um, most banks don't finance um, great imports. So a lot of people end up opting for a personal loan, which again, I just don't recommend. And yeah, I hope you guys got some knowledge from this video. I'm just gonna do a quick, quick summary just to kind of tie everything together. So when buying a brand new car, you have the option of buying it cash, which I don't recommend because of opportunity cost. The second option would be for you to finance it through the bank. You can get your car brand new without paying any deposit at all this is again after you checking your affordability another option is to pay your deposit and then finance the remaining balance of the car right um, and then another option is to defer your deposit which is often called a balloon payment which is again a method i do not recommend um, i do have a way you can beat the system though because you know me hmm. <laughs> i think i'll leave that for a separate video for those that want that option of a balloon payment i can teach you how you can kind of beat the system to make sure that it works for you but i don't want to talk about it today because i genuinely do not encourage it it's just it's a little it's like this you have to be really really smart with your money otherwise it will go completely completely left because what proof do you have that you after five years will in fact have 30 percent of a value of a car to pay if that 30 percent is what 100k you need to be very smart with your money to make sure that you have 100k to pay at the end of your loan that's after five years you have it cash and you know what life happens <laughs> you'll be saving saving thinking nah i got this and life happens and you need to use that money what are you gonna do oh, man. so that one is, is a little bit tricky and i just i never ever ever encourage people to do it because you have to be extra extra smart with your money so yeah that's another that's another way you can finance your car again please stick to five years they will give you an option of you can do i think you can do up to seven years is it seven, 72 months yeah stick to five years stick to five years um if you have to think too hard or if you have to do too much math when you're buying a car chances are you cannot afford it so don't do it choose a cheaper car it's not that deep where you are now is not where you're going to be in the next year or two you can only sell that car and get another one when you're a little you know better off financially if you have to crunch numbers too hard you can't afford it and it's fine <laughs> it's fine drive an entry-level car it's okay we don't all have to drive bmws right at the beginning of our careers it's not that deep remember your finances are absolutely your responsibility so make sure that you don't have that that thing a lot of people have that mponing or this need to be seen and don't do that especially when you're financing things to the bank you will get in trouble okay and i always say whenever you are working with the bank in any way if you're taking money from the bank you must always have an out every time so i'll give you an example with like a mortgage if you get a mortgage if you have a trouble in life like let's say you lose your job god forbid um what you can do is you can rent out the house and then the mortgage will pay itself back i get it. so that's a that's a way out <laughs> of a bad situation so if right now you finance your car through the bank you get you run into a bit of trouble sell it sell it clear your load move on with your life <laughs> Don't have this thing. Oh my gosh, what will people say? I didn't know. Say, ma'am, you don't have money. <laughs> you don't have money. It's okay. It's fine. Go back to the combis. Don't have shame. Like, don't do that. If you have that thing, like, hey, what will people say? That's how you get yourself in trouble because what will happen is you'll try and hold on to the car. Why do you go for this person? Why do you go for that person? You're trying to pay your monthly installments. Next thing that coming, that repossessing your car sell it it's not that deep sell it if you get a bit of change use that to run around to apply to find another job or run around to become an entrepreneur or whatever the case is whatever you need to do to get money and get by in life but the main thing is sell it 
um and also if you ever happen to get in trouble with the with um finances hella in life you can also you have the option of talking to the bank if you just let them know guys i'm in trouble i just lost my job they'll usually give you three months they can give you a three month payment holiday which means you don't have to pay for three months they leave it's about three months yeah um but talk to your bank and see what arrangement you can come to but i say within that three months if if it just doesn't work if the second month of one i know what have just just sell it clear the loan and move on with your life okay i don't believe in buying like kind of higher value vehicles early degree and what personally i don't recommend it um like buying can i get an x5 I, stick to this i don't know what you want <laughs> entry level cars bo vids bo bo ranex bo bo debio those are the cars that I would recommend, both VW, but I heard a lot of people complain that VW is a degree import, so you need to make sure that you are very, very careful. And yeah, that was like a quick summary. Um, I don't think we're at an age where we should be making lifelong decisions. I feel like what I like today is not necessarily what I'm gonna like tomorrow. Like my dream car is a Raptor. I want that car high and low <laughs> when I tell you. So I'm definitely gonna be buying a car, I keep it for two years, sell it, get another one up until I get to the point where I can afford my Raptor. And I think when I finally get to the point where I afford the Raptor, that's probably when I will pay the full term off of the loan between now and then i don't think i'm gonna be going full term with any loan i take the bank better not be watching there's no one from the bank watching right because <laughs> you know we signed for five years but maybe in two two three years that car is going i'm not keeping it and once again remember not to buy a car on personal loan that's all i have for you today <laughs> thank you so much for watching if you have questions comment section below or you can dm me i know some people like to dm me i do prefer that you leave them here because the more you engage the more um you help me beat this youtube algorithm okay so yeah i'd rather you engage here than you dm me but i know some people prefer to dm me so that's still okay but please if you can i'd rather you comment here so that um also if i answer a question i can just answer it once and then if somebody had that same question they can see it asked and the answer so i don't have to keep you know you know what I mean? anyway that's all i have for you today um please be smart be smart with your money be careful when dealing with the bank and yeah, that's all I have for you today. Thank you so much once again for watching. I will catch you in the next video.